to invite the next speaker, Dr. Ul Mulk from uh, Harley University, Harley v University Hospital, Denmark. Thank you very much for the invitation. My name is uh, Dr. Omulk. I'm uh, a uh, senior resident in plastics and burns from uh, Hallow University Hospital. The study I want to present today is uh, called Complications After Radical Axillary and Inguinal Lymph Node Dissections in Patients with uh, Melanoma. So obviously most of you know that malignant melanoma is uh, one of the most uh, rapidly increasing cancer types uh, globally. In uh, Denmark, the incidence of uh, cutaneous malignant melanoma has uh, risen by almost 3% uh, per year over the past four decades. Uh, there is over 1,900 new cases uh, registered annually, corresponding to an incidence of uh, 27 per 100,000 per year. Over 90% of all the skin cancer-related deaths are due to cutaneous malignant melanoma. So, seroma is a frequent post-operative complication to radical axillary and inguinal lymph node dissection. Uh, accumulation of uh, fluid is uh, of great inconvenience for the patient, and it can cause prolongation of hospital stay, increase the risk of infection, and possibly also increase the risk of subsequent uh, lymphedema. So the etiology of uh, seroma formation and how to reduce the incidence is uh, still basically unknown and controversial. Uh, the objective of this study was to describe uh, post-operative complication uh, in malignant melanoma after radical axillary and inguinal uh, lymph node dissection. So uh, between the 1st of January 2008 and the uh, 31st of uh, December 2011, we had 112 patients who went on radical axillary and or inguinal lymph node dissection at our Department of Plastic Surgery and Reconstruction. Uh, a total of 16 patients uh, we excluded from the study because they had clinical metastasis at the time of surgery. Four, pa four patients with uh, squamous cell carcinoma, two patients with uh, macular cell carcinoma, and one patient with sarcoma, and nine patients with melanoma. So the study uh, included a total of 96 patients diagnosed with primary malignant melanoma who had one or more positive lymph nodes after central node biopsy according to the Danish melanoma guidelines. We had 70 patients with axillary who underwent axillary dissection and 26, 26 with inguinal dissection. Uh, and none of the patients underwent bilateral lymph node dissection. So the post-operative drainage regime. In uh, Copenhagen or in Denmark, we do use the cl closed suction drainage uh, system that was used as a routine. Two drains were employed both for axillary and inguinal uh, dissection. One drain was removed after on the second day of surgery and the second drain was uh, within seven days or before if the production was under 30 milliliters over a 24 hour period. Subsequently, a soft, slightly comprehensive uh, bandage was placed in the axilla and generally worn for one or two days. In case of inguinal operation, uh, a comprehensive hip bandage was prescribed in combination with immobilization for 24 hours after removal of the last drain. So these are our results. Uh, the median age of time of operation was 62 years. There was a range from 25 to 87 years old. The sex dress distribution was 57 males and 39 females. Uh, comorbidity, uh, you can see uh, the majority of the patient had none, 41%, and the second uh, biggest was hypertension, 31%. And the rest uh, you can see on the slide. 16% of the patients uh, had over one uh, comorbidity. The melanoma distribution, uh, majority of the patient had uh, SSMM, uh, and the second largest was uh, NM, like nodular uh, melanoma. This is how the primary melanoma localization was uh, uh, at truncus. Sorry, <laughs> it has my slide is a little at the first, but uh, you can see it is um, truncus is the most. Uh, obvious place to be, and then uh, upper extremity and lower extremity, the tumor ulceration, 
uh, mo majority of the patient uh, had no tumor ulceration, 66, and the primary tumor thickness, also called Breslow uh, thickness. So the median uh, drainage uh, period was seven days, and there was a range from two to 15 days. Uh, 40 patients developed seroma, which needed puncture, 41% in the axillary group and 44% in the inguinal group. Uh, the median number of punctures was four, and there was a range from one to 17, and three of these patients developed chronic seroma. 30 patients uh, were diagnosed with lymphedema and referred for lymphedema therapy performed by a physiotherapist. Lymphedema was found in 25% of the patients in the axillary dissection group and 48% uh, percent of the patients in the inguinal dissection uh, group. So overall, we found that there was no association of seroma puncture and in infection. However, among the patients with inguinal lymph node dissection, seven patients who underwent repeated punctures developed infection in comparison to four who were not punctured. There was no obvious association between seroma and the risk of developing lymphedema. Smoking and comorbidity did not appear to be associated with the uh, risk of any uh, complication, either separately or in total. But if you had a BMI over 25, uh, it was associated with an increased risk of any po post-operative complication. This was, however, uh, not the uh, uh, significant result. So our, uh, our study shows that the risk of post-operative seroma and lymphedema after axillary and inguinal lymph node dissection in sentinel-positive melanoma patients was very high, respectively 42% and 31%. Uh, seroma formation was equally high in the two groups. Long-term complications uh, are very serious and can profoundly impact the patient's uh, future quality of life. Uh, so consequently, it is uh, essential to avoid or at least minimize uh, risk of chronic lymphedema and pain. So research focusing on new and gentler methods of operation as well as the optimal post-operative regime, including uh, rehabilitation, are needed. And then uh, I was just for fun looking at PubMed here a week ago and I found this article by a French uh, s uh, group and, and their results uh, are almost uh, similar to mine as well, so that was my study. <laughs> any questions? Is, if there is any questions, this is the time, so we can discuss our concerns. Thank you. Is there a correlation where the melanoma appears? Because uh, melanoma is a skin cancer, right? Yes. It can start from anywhere. Is there any evidence that it starts from a particular place? Uh, no, there's no, uh, it can r randomly, but it comes from a it's mole, right? Uh -huh. So that it is comes uh, from, uh, from, from a nevus or something that goes uh, go dysplastic. But it can, go it can be anywhere on the body. There's no like correlation to where uh, specifically. So if there is no correlation where it starts, then why it targets the lymph node? It, uh, because it's a skin cancer, so it goes uh, through your fat, and the lymph nodes are the first. First one. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, before, if it goes in the blood, then you already have metastasis at that time. Makes so more likely. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. If no more questions. I thank the speaker, and I'll take an opportunity to hand over his certificate of.